how the heck do you start an art career? How do you get that sweet art money and make a living off doing something you love? It's a very good question. I can only really offer what's worked for me, and it is different for every single person, but hopefully you can try things out and kind of figure out what, what works for you and what you like. What I've learned through trial and error and through listening to also lots of lovely people and professionals speak on their own journeys and stuff, one of the most important things I've learned is that it takes like 20 years of having a career before you have like a breakout <laughs> um, where you get big, at least on average. It's called like the 20-year career, right? But basically like you know those people who you see who show up suddenly like all over your feed and everybody loves them and like like there's a book that goes crazy that everyone wants to buy or a webcomic that everyone's reading and they're all in all part of the fandom. A lot of those people have been working on stuff for a very long time. They didn't just show up yesterday and were suddenly famous overnight, generally. Don't get me wrong, there's still people who are like that, but they're very rare compared to the majority of humans. Likely they've been working on their comic for years, or they've had an art career elsewhere, or a whole other career somewhere else, where they've built up an audience and have brought it with them to this book or this comic. Um, you know, maybe it's from drawing fan art, or doing freelance work for, say, like, publishing houses or something, or maybe they're a YouTuber that you've just never heard of before. You know? They, they, they've built up a following somehow over lots of time. So, for example, on a very small scale, because Bones and I are not famous or breakout hits by any means, we worked on our first comic for, like, five years before we started um, getting significant numbers of readers, and that we even have, like, a small amount of readers. Um, but, uh, it still took five years before we kind of got, um, any traction at all. And it was also five years before we actually, like, made any money off of our comics. Um, and we had to start a new comic before we, we were able to monetize anything. Um, our first comic had a lot of, a lot of trouble getting traction. And then as soon as we were, like, finishing it, like, um years into drawing it, we were like, oh, let's just wrap it up and move on. Then people started reading it. So, you know, it's a slow build. We started off with a very, very tiny following. I think we had, like, one reader for a very long time, but slowly through making more comics, reaching out to people, um, starting on YouTube, we slowly have built a little bit of an audience. So, it takes a long time. <laughs> Don't expect fame overnight. You're just gonna drive yourself crazy and beat yourself up for things that are totally out of your control. Um, what you should be doing is working on building a backlog um, because if someone finds, say, like, one work done by you and they like it and then they see that there's, like, you know, years worth of other things by you that they can read or look at, that's gonna be amazing and they're gonna look through all of it and they're gonna tell their friends about it. Whereas, like, they find you and you have, like, one thing, like, say it's, like, one illustration that you've ever put out, they're gonna be like, oh, well, that's cool, and then leave because there's nothing else to look at. So you gotta work on building up that backlog and sharing your work so that people can find you and notice you, and you'll get there. You'll slowly build up that audience. Another thing I always try to remember is that you're always kind of moving toward your, your mountain. Um, so Neil Gaiman did, like, a talk forever ago. Um, talking about, like, uh, becoming a writer and making good art and stuff. Um, but he, at one point in the video, he talks about um, having a mountain that he was always working towards, where he, he said, like, becoming a writer was the mountain. So he'd make all these little choices that would kind of lead him toward that mountain or up that mountain. So, you know, taking, uh, I think one example was, like, he lied about where he was published so he could get a, a short story published in a magazine or something. So don't do that. Don't go around lying to people. <laughs> but, um, you know, take, take work and do work. Create your own stuff that kind of leads you toward that mountain, whatever it is for you. Um, for me, it's like, I want to work on my comics full time and make money off that or my art full time and make money off that, whether it's videos or comics or whatever. Um, so whatever I can do that gets me toward that point, I'm going to do it. And things that worked, um, in the past, like doing terrible freelance jobs that don't pay anything, 
Like, five years ago, yeah, I needed to take those, but now I don't, because I have more experience, and, um, I have better stuff to do, honestly. <laughs> so, you know, your, your, your path will change as you make towards that mountain, but you gotta keep your eye on that and slowly move toward it. You're not gonna make it in a day. It's gonna be lots of, like, it's gonna take a while to get there and then to get up it, because that's a lot of work and it takes a lot of time, but you can do it. You can get there. It's still in sight. I hope I didn't butcher that talk. It's been a while since I heard it, but I always think about that one concept, you know? Um, and my final piece of advice is you're definitely better off spending time on personal projects that you love and that you're passionate about um, for free than doing crappy work for other people for no pay and no rights. <laughs> Your time is better served working on um, a passion project on the side, like while well, you, I don't know, you know, you can be like me and be a graphic designer by day and do comics by night. Um, you know, working away on your personal projects that you love uh, will do much better for you because you'll, you're, you're, you're building your skill and you are doing something you love. You're putting out a story that you've always wanted to do. Eventually, you know, you're, you're going to have that 20-year that career build and someone's going to see this amazing comic that you've done and they are going to give you so much money for it or whatever. Or you're going to get a great job offer somewhere that you've always wanted to work because they saw this comic and it aligned with what they want to do and they think you're great. So, it, you know, the, the passion project doesn't always have an immediate payoff. You know, sometimes it can turn into, like, something you can monetize. Sometimes it doesn't, but it gets you closer to the mountain. But doing terrible, awful work for no pay and, like, no credit is not going to get you anywhere. It's just going to waste your time. Sure, you might improve a little bit as an artist, but you're going to be stifled by unreasonable people who are just using you for this wonderful skill that you have, and it's just not worth your time. Don't get me wrong, there are times in my life where I've had to take those crappy jobs because I really needed the money to survive, but, you know, if you're not at that point where you're totally gonna go under if you don't take this one crappy freelance job, don't take it. You're better off doing something for yourself um, and working on your own passions, you know? I, I think it's, it's very easy to be, like, desperate to make money off your art or desperate to get noticed for your art so that any, like, little piece of attention you get, even if it's someone who's like, I won't pay you, but make this comic for me, you know? Like, you're like, oh man, someone wants my art. They think I'm good. And it's like, no, they're just using you. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Make your own stuff. You're better off. It's very tempting to, yeah, just fall prey to people who will take advantage of you for your, your, your want to make money off your art. You know, they'll commission you for terrible prices. Don't do it. It's really not worth it. It's just a headache and you should just work on your own comic and have fun. So yeah, I guess I can also talk about kind of my own journey. Um, this is very cut down and missing a lot of steps to it, but, um, so how I, how I have built my career so far, my tiny little career. So Bones and I started working on our web comics in high school. So it was the end of our, our high school years around 2012. Um, we started doing our first webcomic, Sovereign, and we worked on that for a long time. I did some freelance illustration um, on the side, as well as doing lots of part-time, like, food service and serving jobs, which I hated. For the most part, there was one that was nice, but overall the work was no pay for so much work. <laughs> um, but anyways... So over the years, we did some pitches to publishers that never panned out. Like, we'd wait years, and then we finally get, like, a, a rejection. Like, a nicely worded rejection, but none of them really panned out. Um, you know, I'd, I'd do fan art and illustrations and try to join anthologies and stuff. And um, I offered commissions all the time, which no one ever took. Maybe one or two lovely friends took commissions from me when I started out, but they never really went anywhere. But then we started our next webcomic, Pretty Mouth, <laughs> which actually took off. It, like, not a huge following, but a decent amount. People kind of started understanding who we were. They're like, oh, you guys made Pretty Mouth. That's cool. Um, we actually made some friends through Pretty Mouth who really liked it, and then we really liked their stuff, and we're like, dang, let's be friends. And, um... We started going to conventions and actually selling books because we could print Pretty Mouth because it was black and white. 
um, instead of a full color comic that I formatted terribly like Sovereign. Um, so yeah, we started going to conventions, making some money off things. Um, we started getting recognized at our local con scene because we'd show up to the same ones every year and people would buy Pretty Mouth and then they'd buy Volume 2 and then they'd be like, oh, you got Magpie, buy that. And we'd start making friends with other artists in the artist alley, which is really what you want to do. You want to get lots of networking done and make friends because if you have a friend in the industry, they'll hook you up for jobs if they think you're right for it and it's also nice to have friends and a support network. I also started getting like regularly commissioned at conventions which was nice because I personally hate doing commission work. I don't hate it but it's not my favorite. I'm, I'm much happier working on like comics and stuff but I don't really mind it at conventions because I just get it done within a couple hours and then they get the finished piece and they're really happy with it so I don't have to sit and take forever and feel guilty about it so yeah. Um, so that was great when I finally started getting, like, commissions without all the hassle and people trying to negotiate bad prices or whatever, or, I don't know, or micromanaging me when I'm trying to commission, like, draw their commissions. So, yeah. We made more books and more webcomics. Um, I started doing graphic design full-time at a local company. Um, Bones and I did some successful Kickstarters because enough people knew about us to want to to buy more stories from us, so that was really cool. We started our YouTube channel, which, as you see, we are here. We're doing all right. Um, started building a community through it, which is really amazing and has been wonderful, a wonderful experience. I started getting more established as a graphic designer, and I moved to a new full-time job. You know, we started to get a following for a lot of our comics and our other work because of our YouTube um, and our webcomics. And just getting more and more readers and being active on social media and attracting more people who want to read and watch our stuff. And I don't know, now we actually have like a merch store that people buy from <laughs> instead of just sitting there collecting dust. So yeah, it's been a very slow build since 2012. Um, and we're still very small. We've got a lot of growing to do. If I want to be like a full-time comic artist or artist or whatever outside of my graphic design job. But I'm very thankful for all the opportunities we've had and all the progress we've made. Yeah. <laughs> um, like I said, this like skims over a lot of a lot of <laughs> events that happened and ups and downs and etc. But yeah, your career will build slowly. Give it time. Keep making things that excite you and that you're passionate about. If a job looks fishy or doesn't pay very well, don't take it listen to your gut, um, and make lots of friends. Like I said, making friends in the industry is the best way to get your name out there to other fans and other creators who you can collaborate with or just be fans of each other, and that's really sweet. And yeah, good luck. I believe in you. You can do it. You can make the sweet monies off your art. Um, don't be afraid to, like, expand out of comics. That's one thing I learned with, like, getting a graphic design job was I was like, oh, I like graphic design. <laughs> I'm not just gonna do illustration forever, which is fine. Like, I, I think I got my graphic design job because my illustration skills were, like, pretty good. Um, but yeah, diversify. Check out lots of different opportunities, job opportunities. If there's something that seems kind of interesting where you can make some money off it, like a full-time job or something, like, try it out. If you hate it, you can always quit. Ooh, woo. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, good luck. I think you guys can do it. Um, make sure to check out our Discord server if you want to meet some other artists and talk about webcomics and art career stuff. And yeah, I think I think that's all I got today. Um, thank you so much for listening. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!